So are you ready to PR yourself? We'll remove the mystery from all things PR and we'll discuss everything from our top strategies to tips and tricks and everything that you can utilize to further enhance your brand or your message. I've been in media, I'm a journalist, and I'm also a publicist. I am Leah Frazier, CEO of Think3 Media and your host for PR Yourself with Leah Frazier. Let's go. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to PR Yourself with Leah Frazier. You guys, listen, you guys are blowing my mind. We just received notification that this podcast is in the top 30, number 29 actually, in the U.S. for marketing podcasts and in the top 100 in Canada for marketing podcasts. So thank you to each and every one of you faithful listeners. Thank you guys for sharing this out. Thank you for interacting with me. Thanks for sharing it on social media. We're just extremely grateful that this project has reached the levels that it has in such a short period of time. So thank you again. And I want you guys to just get interactive, you know, go on PR yourself with Leah uh, leave me a message and let me know if you have an episode suggestion or there's something going on with your business that you want me to bring in the experts to help and tell you how to PR it better. Again, get involved. You're going to go to the link in my bio at the Leah Frazier on Instagram. And I have a whole list of things you can do. You can join our private Facebook group. In that group, I go live. I tell you what's hot and trending in social media and marketing and PR. I put media leads in there. There's one I've got to do today. (laughs) So, and you're also going to want to interact with the other women, um, And I think we have some men in that community now, um, in that private Facebook community, okay? Because I'm going to start growing that so that you guys can discuss among yourselves how to PR yourselves better as we move through 2021 and beyond. Also, if you're interested, we still have the monthly membership available. It's only $49 a month, and you can find information on that at think3media.com forward slash think3edu. That is our monthly membership where I literally do a class session like I would teach with my students at the university. I do a class session on what's hot in marketing and public relations. I give you your takeaways. I give you something to work on for 30 days. And then several weeks later, we come back and we mastermind as a group to make sure that we're working on that one thing that you are just you need to get worked on for that month. And we continue that monthly. And it's a great resource and it's a great way an affordable way for you to hear from me. I bring in experts and also for you to have accountability. That way you're working through for solutions for your small business or as an entrepreneur. And lastly, (laughs) you're going to want to stay tuned. Yes, PRYourselfBook.com. You're going to want to sign up for that as we get closer to the book being released. But also you're going to want to go to PR Yourself. Um, with leahfraser.com online. There's a tab called course and you're going to want to sign up there because I am re-releasing my live course one last time. I know I said that before. I'm going to do it again. I have just revised it. I've created a couple more modules and it's really going to go into a little bit more of an organized depth on how you can earn free media and press coverage consistently for your small business and your brand. And again, it's super duper affordable and I want to offer that to you guys. So thank you guys so much for tuning in and enjoy this latest episode. And I look forward to hearing from you all. All right, guys. Christian's going to get <laughs> to another session. Well, another PR Petty session. It's early. I can't even introduce my own podcast. (laughs) Another session, another PR session for PR Yourself with Leah Frazier. I'm back with my resident Petty PR pro, Chandra Gore out of the DMV area. You guys love her. She is back, but we're not talking Gorilla Glue today. Now, are we? We're talking. Congratulations on the baby, ma'am. Go ahead. Yeah, congratulations on the baby to Tessica Brown. But um, what we are talking about today is this little Nas X situation. Oh, um, and there's two sets we got to dive into. <laughs> the PR team for little Nas X and then the PR team for his shoe, a uh, Nike shoe artist. So 
Um, let's go with Little Nas X first. If you guys haven't seen it, I'll put a link in uh, to an article. I'm not going to link the actual video because I just I don't want, really want um, anything to do <laughs> with saying that I was promoting it or making you. <laughs> You say, Leah, I can never unsee this. I don't want that on my conscience. But um, <laughs> you guys know him from Old Town Road. Um, Blew Up came out as a part of the LGBTQ plus community. Um, just really talented entertainer. Um, broke a lot of barriers. Um, reached a lot of numbers with that hit. And now has come out with a, a song and music video that is just ultra satanic and um, racy. And it came on my feet and now like the world is in a frenzy. And so and Chandra and I, our private PR group that we're a part of, uh, the question was, do you think his PR team approved this? I'm thinking the whole concept of the video, the, the visuals in the video itself, and what would you do as a publicist? So that's the question. And um, I have my opinion, but I'm gonna let my dear guest start off with hers and then I'll weigh in. So what, what do you think about this demonic, um, satanic video that Little Nas X has put out? Okay, well, wait a minute. Let's just go ahead and say this now. The forefathers of three, six mafia. And, and I still listen to three six. That's what I'm saying. Bone thugs and harmonies, and the DMX. Okay, <laughs> like I, mean, I get why. I gotta go look that up. It was East 1999, like a satanic chant. <laughs> yes, yes, it is. Like this is what I'm saying. Like so, you know, people dabble in what would move the meter, and I'm sorry, but ain't nobody. You, he did what he 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 gave what it was supposed to be gave on this one because guess what he's trending, trending. Oh, guess what he's trending. Like let's just let's just call a spade a spade. Like whoever is, him right now, you know his 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 um it's it's it was it was there to move the meter. Plus, you know how Prince was. You know, wearing eyeliner, heels, and blouses back in the day, he was very androgynous. Um, I mean, it's just a a, a ev elevated. Ev it's the evolution of artistry. I'm not gonna sit up here and say, you know, because I saw publicists like dogging, and I would have quit if he would have came to me with the satanic stuff. Okay, girl. You all know, like, some people are shock factors. And he explained, like, this is, you know, he explained himself, which he shouldn't have. I don't feel he should have had to explain himself. Because it's his bit, his art, people who support it, support it. But, you know, I would have had to say, you know, as a publicist, hey, hey, now. Now, listen, you got your therapist on, um, on speed dial because the backlash is going to be something you may not handle correctly so do we want to have the therapist come in a little bit because what? he's always been so uh hilarious on social media when it comes to the clapbacks like I feel like he's the I don't know what his pronouns are so I I feel bad if I say he's the king just call him that baby go ahead that baby uh, king, <laughs> queen prince what you know whatever he prefers to be called um but his clapbacks are hilarious like even when people he was like look when when I came out, y'all told me to go to hell. And that's so what I did in my video. And I, I mean, so there was a part of me that's like, I still like this kid. You know what I mean? Like, he's so funny. He did what he had to do and he owned it. Um, so I don't think he's going to have, it doesn't appear that he's the type of person that cares what people have to say. Yeah, but after a while, it takes a toll on you. Because my, you know, because I laugh sometimes when I'm dead serious about this, like, to break but there's a lot of the backlash that that young boy is or uh, that he's receiving is just crazy but he he's he's opened the door for conversation i will say he did what he came to do you know because if you look at black and brown children who identify as homosexuals you know they are they are they are they are hurt and you know so he's bringing a light to that like so this is what i'm saying you know it you damned if you do damned if you don't but the church is not in in, in, in the church is mad right now okay you will not 
do this, okay? <laughs> I was told, or, you know, I've just been reading a bunch of articles. Like, I'm just very sensitive to what I digest. And so mm-hmm. that's down to the music I listen to, the podcast I listen to, what I read. And so I'm fine with just seeing some of the visuals and reading the articles. But yeah, I um, I, I'm it. like, I don't need to see him. I was reading being bent over by Satan and whatever was going yeah, on um, with that. That's um, not my... Um, that's um, a little too much for me. In my I, can listen, I can listen to... I can, the thing is, the, stat, the funny thing is that the song is totally doesn't have anything to do with the visual. Like, the funny thing is, I was hearing it played the other day and I was like, I've already heard this song. Right. Like, it's it's already a popular song. So the... And, and, and you know, I'm used to the days, uh, you know, MTV, BET, VH1, when music videos. That would have been on After Dark. Right. That would have been on Uncut. Okay. Hey, hey, way uncut After Dark. <laughs> With Nelly video. Remember that. I'm, I'm, a, I'm along the same lines as you. I have the ability to kind of remove myself and see it for what it is. And so I, I am exactly on the same road as you are. Um, to say, and there was a guy in the group that kind of had our same opinion, and they just chewed him a new one. And it was like, no, yeah, I said, rating. I ain't gonna PR, and and the success of the campaign, whatever they were trying to get out of it. Which, if it were, if it's buzz, like you said, you got it. If mm-hmm. it's engagement online, you got organic engagement that you didn't even have to pay for. But I hate to say this because I know we're going to talk about this later, but did you see how it just pushed that fool in the car out out the, the news cycle? I just want to say, but if y'all not happy about that, then y'all <laughs> thank you, Lil Nas X, because we got time. Right there, Jackson. You're thank not you. even important anymore. Who yeah, it was the thing that we were talking about and it's like, no one's talking about Kirk. <laughs> because this this ain't right so yeah but i mean it's I, i'm with you like i'm kind of i wasn't surprised i think i was surprised at how far it went but i wasn't surprised just because when he first came out the outfits that he wore i saw him constantly pushing the envelope so for him to push it in the way that he did i wasn't prepared for it but like you said if if he were like a prince like, okay, but out jeans come on now, now. Yes. Mm-hmm. When Prince came out with them, them chaps with the buttless, yeah, and all the women were like, ah. but ain't nobody, ain't nobody that was, you know what I'm saying? Like if this was back in the day, there would have been a stack of CDs and somebody in a steamroller rolled it all over. Like I'm just saying, like I missed the theatrics of, of yesteryear. <laughs> yeah, and I mean that's I can separate Leah the person, Leah's beliefs, Leah's spirituality from a PR and marketing campaign, which. They hit it and they knew they, what it was going to do. So you can't tell me that they're not prepared, like you said, and they did not prepare him. Yeah. And to your point, there have been other artists that have been labeled things. And so the perfect setup is to now rebrand his ass and like shoot him off in another direction. So yep. it's like, and that's what he's going to do. Exactly. And to me, <laughs> when we talk about life cycles and, and artists that are entertainers that have like this long staying power, that's what it is. It's like, okay, Nicki Minaj, you come out, you're over, overly sexualized. You're this, you're this. Okay, now you're a mom. We're going to paint you in this. Like, boom, shoot her off. Lady look, Gaga comes out. Look at, they yeah. all, they all have. So now he's going to have something where, you know, uh, yeah, I was talking to somebody about Lady Gaga. I was like, when, when she first came out, her videos were weird. And, Ooh. and people were coming on to Lady Gaga's case and it was like oh she's weird she must do this and she's crazy and she's this and then now you know she's an actress she mm-hmm. singing at like, the inaugurations and things yeah, singing at the inaugurations and full dresses and like and then she went on her body positivity uh kick years ago when she's like I, you know this is just my body I'm gonna be curvy and all of that she was able to change. So we we see this with entertainers all the time. It's nothing new. Um, and I'm with you in that, you know, Can they, I they, they really quick. do. And they're getting results. Very measurable, earned in PR land, earned organic results that they don't have to pay for. 
and I, I just gotta be petty real quick. If you're gonna get on your little soapbox, know the difference between sale and sell. Oh God, what happened? Because it was like y'all out here selling your soul to the devil. Um, I didn't know your soul was on a discount sale. If it's sell, sell people. Like I'm just because I listen. I get what they trying to say, but get y'all words together before y'all start getting on your soapbox telling people how to live their life and what they doing and what you won't do. That's <laughs> funny. Um, I want to comment. <laughs> so we're we're on the same page as it comes to little Nas X oh, but his team did and now everybody even and, and even for Christians it's like you can't say that you're not sitting back in the cut and you're gonna be like okay now what's he gonna do next you're still paying attention you what's are you're not either you praying for him or you watching what he gonna do next so I'm just you, either way you're talking about that child yeah so uh I don't I mean Kudos to the PR team. Kudos Please. on the rollout. I mean, I just there's, you know what I, I mean. I feel bad for the for the artist because he wasn't named in the suit, so therefore I eat. his team was smart. Now I'm I'm gonna say this: his team legally protected him though, and that was the beautiful part of no matter what your views are. If your team, you know, was they knew what was going to be the backlash of them buying those Air Maxes and doing that, doing the modifications to them. So the artist is on the hook for the modifications and the, the use of Nike and all that other stuff. Little Nas X, he's nowhere on the suit. And I'm like, oh, that's whoever his attorney is, whoever advised him, read that contract correct and say, I release all liabilities. They could listen. They read that clause, that clause in that contract. All right. So, he was covered with the blood of Jesus and by his team <laughs> when it came down to that. <laughs> I'm just saying because everybody's like, oh, that's what he that's what he gets. So I'm like, y'all didn't read what was said. Like y'all are Y'all are playing and not realizing what actually was in the the, the suit. You know, y'all want to vilify him, but one thing you can't vilify is the fact of look at the filing people. They're not suing him. They're not this because you want to be mad at that child so bad, but you can't like he protected himself and his team did. I kudos to the legal team. Kudos to the uh, PR team. Kudos to the digital marketing team because I'm gonna tell you something. They strategically placed that, and this the video is on Facebook. Like literally, it's on Facebook, and every time somebody makes a post about it, here comes the video in the news feed. I'm like, you ain't this a mess? <laughs> I'm gonna see how many views this video has on YouTube. And I tried to get. Uh my trademark attorney to come on, but it's six o'clock on the West Coast. But <clears throat> for some of you guys that aren't aware, um, right along the rollout of the video and the imagery and everything being dropped by Little Nas X, there were then images in a partnership um, that he, where he had these Nike shoes that they said were satanic. In the bottom of the shoes, they said was a drop. Was it a drop of human blood? It's just one drop of human blood. This video got one 43 drop. million views. Exactly. How and much I, I are you two paying for that? I, I can't. No, it's it's the you know it's people watching it on replay. But he hit the nice shit for me. Have, I mean, 43 million views as uh, this fast as an artist again. Four CRT days ago, and marketing team wins. Four it's days cool. ago. Yeah, I know. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying that's 10 million views. Wait a minute, a over 10 million views a day. Then, this, um, this, this, the shoe was a thousand dollars. Was it just one pair that he was uh it's selling? One pair, yeah. So, he he collabed with an artist. Now, I've seen these, uh, I actually have a friend that does custom shoes for uh, NBA and NFL players. So it's not uncommon that people take, you know, Nike, Adidas, all those shoes and then customize them and make them the way that they want for their feet. That's not out the gate. And I think that um, those brands 
are used to it, they're not going to spend like legally, like I'll just put my attorney hat on, like it costs a lot of money to sue. They're not, they don't want to waste their legal time, like for one person creating these custom shoes. But in this situation where it's getting so much buzz to the fact that people think that Nike actually either commissioned this artist or that the artist was connected to Nike, which is then connected to uh the the video and all of the satanic things they had to step in and say now i'm going to sue you because you did this without our authorization and it's damaging to our brand so I, we saw this coming a mile away so now pr team is in uh, crisis management mode because people thought that and and because they weren't aware I'm pretty sure PR firm is getting paid a grip right now to fix right. this shit. But the thing is with Nike though, and this is the this is the spin on it. It's more of they're afraid of losing the 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 all the family or you know yeah. losing that market for you know a hundred pairs of shoes or sixty whatever how many pairs of shoes. They're they don't they don't want to be associated with something like that because they didn't drive they didn't drive the boat on that you very, know what I mean very true so it's more of I think this is more of a flex like why didn't you come to us first now you about to be on punishment right you know because I don't Nike is not one to go do something and ask for apology later you got to ask first and then you know what I'm saying so that because the truth the fact of the matter is they purchased the shoes from nike they purchased those shoes and then they modified them right so if they would have just let you know they, they there wasn't they couldn't there was no way around not saying their nike air maxes to sell their product so there's so many different legal um loop you know loops that they could you know I just, for anybody to say, oh, they suing Lil Nas X, listen, he's not named in the suit because it was not his, it's, it's not, he, he did not pick the shoe up, say that, like, that's not what, that's, so stop saying, because I saw something that was so mean, and I'm like, all you saying is good for his, because he's part of the LGBTQIA plus community, that's why you say that's good, they should have sued his, First of all, that's some, some hateful stuff to say. And second of all, really? Really? Well, I said, well, then I want to, I really want to say comment, but you ain't felt that way when your baby mama sued you. So <laughs> why are you talking? Like, it's just, he moved the meter. He actually broke the meter. He did what he set out to do. He spoke out about how he fought, he, you know, he had, the hangups when he's growing up as a young queer child, you know, how, you know, the, then when he came out, they tell him to go to hell. So when he finally go, why y'all mad? And I, and I'm, I'm going to post all of this. Cause I just think, <laughs> um, and I'm, my thing is, is we're growing up or we're living in a world or first of all, in, in any type of PR situation, <clears throat> just like we discussed today, I have to rap because I have a, Yes. A, a podcast interview and it's just crazy Chandra like she, I got the thing and she and then all of a sudden it's a YouTube thing and I was like oh so I gotta actually do something with my face <laughs> anywho um but I think in any situation even in some of the things that we do do you have to have values and all of that absolutely but if you're trying to assess the situation on whether or not somebody um, marketed themselves appropriately, or um, uh, is it PRable, or did they PR themselves good? We have to separate ourselves out of it. Look at it for what it is, and say nope. they just, you know, PR the hell out of this campaign. Literally, <laughs> the hell. Um, we can't I ain't even made kudos team. Because they PR the hell out of it. That was hot. <laughs> literally <laughs> you know and it's just like it's like you know there is more it, crazy you know it's there's mm -hmm. more good things steamrolling from this especially if he's able you know and he's saying this was art this was this so now on the creative meter people are looking at him as a creative artist 
um, who expresses himself unapologetically because I was reading a bunch of the, the music pros online, like Frank Gaston was just singing his praises and Frank got ripped a new one. And, um, and there were some things, but just from what I know from the entertainment industry, I'm not gonna go there, just how they're, some of the stuff that they do. Um, but well, Frank- nobody got, said nothing when DMX was in the tub full of blood. Listen, I was like, and what was the name of the city? It's dark and hell, and hell is hot. hot. And I'm sitting here, what's my name? Hey, what's up, the kid? I ain't bought that much. And I'm like, yes, we was in there with it and growling and barking. Listen, I, I have the whole album on my title and I listen to it as I work. So just like you said, there is DMX, there's Three Six Mafia, there's um, Bold Thugs and Harmony. Like this isn't the first time. When Donna did a whole, did a whole sacrilegious, quote unquote, sacrilegious whole album, all the visuals, like, listen. <laughs> they're like DMX, they're gonna come back. They're gonna, if, if Christians, they're gonna come back. <laughs> So, you know what I mean? And if they don't, that's their preference. We have to stop forcing our, or inserting our faith or and doing it to me, like this is gonna take a whole nother direction, but like, and doing it in a way that's so forceful to the point people don't even want to look yeah. into it. So now like, let's just say you were open to having the conversation with Little Nas X or his team, or that was the way he felt. Cause we have to be honest in how Christians have treated the LGBTQ plus community historically over all these years. Yep. So he's definitely giving you the middle finger as he goes off in this other direction. And it's just like, look, you kind of like, I'm damned if I do, damned if I don't, but I don't want to be. Look at how you guys are reacting right now. I kind of the right choice. The first thing he did when he came out, you going to hell, okay? Like, y'all need to stop. I, I went in my video. Now you can see it. And this is what it was like. You know, how you how you mad because you said I was going somewhere, so I just took a trip. Like, a trip. I, I created it. I visualized it. But, girl, that's a whole other, like. <sighs> with that lace front, though, I ain't even going to give that baby his props. Now, that hell was done. Now, like, I, listen. I, like I, I said, I'm just gonna see whatever <laughs> visuals are circulating around. But. That's what I'm. That's what I'm looking at. The visuals, the pictures. I'm gonna keep, listen. Whoever was the creative the team on that. This isn't the first time. I mean, the weekend. Remember when all the kids were coming out? And uh, I, I, I remember. I was driving in a car, and I had somebody else's kid in my car. We were going somewhere, and she said, "Miss Frazier, um, one of the weekend songs came on. It was like when he first came out and blew up." And she says, oh, you know, he worships the devil. And I say, he does? And she says, yeah, you're supposed to listen to all of his music videos, but listen to all the songs, but do it backwards because then it, it like, it's this progression. It, it, um, and she says, we all know it because of whatever social media platform they, they learned it from. And I said, oh, really? I didn't know. But if you think about it, again, separating the self from a marketing standpoint, guess how many streams and guess how many times people are viewing it because now they're trying to watch it in a certain order to put the videos, to piece the videos together yep. to see this long theatrical, um, his quote unquote trip to hell or, or him selling his soul, like you said. Um, so whatever, it's, it's not the first time and it sure as hell won't be the last. So um, I like to thank you guys all for tuning in. I, I So we are definitely not saying that this is a PR fail. This is actually PR success. I wit girl, I could have been intern on that one, honey. Like, <laughs> that is award-winning public relations. Not no award that you pay to get so that you say you had an award. This is an award-winning campaign that hit every, like, if in a textbook, when you look at what is a successful PR campaign, this is going to go in there. And for marketing and everything, I'm, I'm judging the Webby Awards right now. And one of the things in the categories that we have to look at is just overall best organic reach and media. And, and one of the things that they have to prove up in their videos or they have to prove up to us as judges is where did you start? And what did you get without even having to pay for it and measure it? and when you see the length of where this campaign has gone and around the world and the numbers that he didn't have to pay for, look, 
the sun is now shining in my face. It's God. It's a halo. Because you know what you it's the truth. Like, and this, listen, I. Uh, but won't, it was but. nice to chit chat with you this morning. Um, <laughs> this, Chandra and I are on the same page as PR professionals, so you can be as mad as you want. Um, we were able to separate our personal beliefs from. Trust and believe, my clap back is not what you want. <laughs> I mean, I, uh, I don't know if I'm gonna weigh in on the group. I don't know if I want to. Ah, no, because I tread lightly. Because my cuss outs be, I don't. Be, I'm, I'm a, call it what you want. I got your phone number. You say something, I'm gonna call you. And so, therefore, I'm gonna leave that alone because I'm like y'all real funny. That's why you. you well, you guys let us know what you think in the comments. Send me a message, Leah at think3media.com. I will be posting this teaser. Chandra, I'll send you the teaser as well. Let us know what okay. you guys think in the comments. And would you, if you were a publicist, would you be able to separate the actual duties of your business from the message itself? Um, I, I mean, it's, it's a great question. We want to know. Yep. Um, and send me any other topics you'd like for us to review. Like Chandra and I said, there's so much going on. We can't even keep up. And we're just trying to, hey, girl, do you have an hour before you go to bed to talk about this? Then we got this person. And it, like, there's so many PR. Can y'all stop things. doing stuff for two weeks so we can get our life this yeah. <laughs> All in cahoots and just say we're not going to fuck up for a whole week. That would be great because I can't keep up. Oh, pseudo celebrities and celebrities. Let's just go ahead and say that. Yeah, with A list, D list, all it Z list, all your double Z list. Yes, and just say we're gonna give Lee and Chandra a break so they can get their work done. Um, but stay tuned for the next PR Petty. I've I've gotten you guys feedback. I was told that this is your absolute favorite part of the podcast, and so I'm always. Uh, Chandra tells me she's gonna come on because I would hate to do these by myself. <laughs> Cause we get a good key key though. Cause sometimes it's we're like we're talking about it anyway, so we might as well just record it. So, all right, you guys, I have to shoot off. You know what to do: subscribe, rate, review, leave me a comment. I always try to respond back as quickly as I can to you guys. Um, and thank you guys for your support of the podcast. And until next time.